All right. We're going to be looking at a few verses in Galatians, and we, we can make it more interactive. You can ask me any question you want. Okay. So, so we were talking uh, earlier today about the fact that you have to make sure you understand that your salvation, that you are saved, that there was a transformation in your, in your life, and that it's evident you you confess Jesus as your Savior and you're living for Him, right? We talked about that this morning. So what we're going to look at right now is Galatians 5, 16 and 17. And what I want to do is try to explain it, but I want you to ask questions if you have them, all right? So here it is. But I say, walk by the Spirit. Now when it says by the Spirit, it means by the Holy Spirit. Walk by the Holy Spirit. And you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. All right. So who understands this passage? Does anyone want to give some, um, some thoughts on that? Walk by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, and you won't do the desires of the flesh. And then it says that there's a battle going on between the flesh and your nature, right? Give me some insight. What does that mean? Anybody have any idea what that means? Because I never understood this. Even after I went to Bible college, I didn't understand it. Then finally, I, I understood it one day. I'm like, wow, this is tremendous. But uh, I'm not as smart as you. I'm sure some of you already understand it. So what, what does it mean? By walk by the Spirit so you won't do what the flesh wants. What does that mean? Anybody have any clue? None? No clue at all? What does that mean? <laughs> all right. Okay, so, so basically what it means by walk by the Spirit means what are your everyday life as you live your life. All right? Like you get up, uh, you're going to go to school, you, you get dressed, uh, you're, you're at school, you're hanging out with your buddies, and you're talking and you're interacting and you and you go about your day. As you go about your day, that's what he's saying. As you're doing life every day. Now, maybe some of you don't go to public school, you homeschool. Sorry, my kids did that. They're interacting with one another, right? And then they go to youth meeting and they interact with other believers. And then we go to the store and they see other people. And you your everyday walk, what you're doing every day, right? You're supposed to walk by the Holy Spirit, because if you don't, then you're gonna do what the flesh wants, right? Does that make a little bit more sense? All right, now, what do we mean by the flesh? What do we mean by the flesh? Anybody have any idea? Like your physical body, right? Yeah, your, okay, your physical body, right? But it's not just talking about your, your, your bones, right? Your physical body, uh, that, that's, but it's going beyond that into who you are when you were born from mom and dad, right? So when you were born from mom and dad, what happened to you? You were born in, in who? In, in, in sin, right? Or in Adam, right? You were born in Adam. So what happens is because you were born that way when you're little, your mom says, don't do that. And what do you do? You do it, right? As soon as my mom or dad told me not to do something, I would do it because, you know, because I was born in sin, right? In, the, in my flesh. So my neighbor was a, an old lady and real, real mean, you know? And she had a sign, don't step on the grass. So what do you think my brother and I did? <laughs> we were walking outside, we were like, step, you know, and hoping she didn't look, right? And so she caught us a couple of times. Uh, so so that, that's your nature, your, your nature, who you are when you're born from mom and dad, unfortunately always wants to do wrong. Always. It, it just, it leans that way. It just it's, it wants to do wrong. So when I was saved then, when I was young, I was 11 when I was saved, and then I was getting older, you get into when you're 14, 15, you know, you turn into a man or, or you turn into women, right? Uh, you, you grow up, and all of a sudden, you, all these desires were, were waking up in me, and it was freaking me out. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought I was a Christian, and if I am a Christian, and I do read my Bible, and I do to the Lord, why, why do I want to sin? And it was just kind of baffling me, and I was like, okay, how does this work? And I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, am I a Christian or am I not a, am I not a Christian? And what's going on here? So I go and talk to this dude. So I tell him, look, I read my Bible. I pray. 
and then and then I have I have wrong thoughts, you know, dirty thoughts, or I I was playing basketball and somebody hit me and I cursed. Why did I do that? I'm a Christian, and so the, so the guy the guy tells me, well, what happens is you're not tired enough. You need to uh, you know run more, get more tired, so that you won't have time to have those wrong thoughts and do those things. What do y'all think about that? What do y'all think about that? Huh? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, really? That's what you got to do? Okay. So, you know, I went and played ball for five hours. <laughs> uh, really, literally, five hours straight. And, and I got home and I was like, whoa, I'm tired. I took a shower and it, right, I had wrong thoughts. You know, and, and, and I started, I'm like, wait a minute, but that didn't work. That didn't work. Right? So, uh, especially when I was your age, I, was, I never got, I was always full of energy, right? And so I'm like, hmm. So what's going on? I couldn't figure it out, right? So I am a Christian. I'm pretty sure I am, but I'm confused because I constantly wanted to do wrong. You know, if, if I could, I turn the TV and I would look, and, and, and I would look at something wrong. Just, I'm curious. Oh, what is that? And I wanted to see sin. Sound familiar, right? And, and Mom said, "Don't do this." I don't know why they say not to do that. I think I'm going to do it just to see why they said not to do it. Yeah, now you see what I think, right? Pretty crazy. And so it, it, was, it was like freaking me out, like, what, what is going on, right? So then you get to a passage like this, and they're, they're actually addressing the issue, right? So, so it says, let's look at it again, all right? If you don't have it, that's fine. Just listen. You can go ahead and enjoy your snack or whatever you're doing. But I say, walk by the Spirit. That is the way your everyday life, as you go about life, it's got to be by this Holy Spirit, right? Now, you know the Holy Spirit was given to you when you were saved, right? You know that? I'm, I'm assuming you, you know the, the basic Christianity. When you get saved, you get the Holy Spirit. In case you didn't know, now you know, right? So you get the Holy Spirit. He comes into your life. And He's there. You can't get rid of Him. It's because He said that we're a temple of the Holy Spirit. You don't belong to yourself anymore. Now you're the Holy Spirit. Right? So basically, here's what happened. When you get saved, God... The Holy Spirit comes into your life and he says, okay, now let, let me work with you so that you can do what I want you to do rather than what the flesh wants you to do. All right? So then what happens is you be, uh, we don't have a chalkboard, so we're just going to have to picture it. So all of a sudden you realize that you have two natures in you. All right? You have two natures. That's right. That doesn't mean you're a schizo. All right, this will, uh, stay with me, dude. Stay with me. All right. So you have your your you have your nature your, your nature from mom and dad. It's called your Adam your Adamic nature, right? Adam and Eve gave us sin, and consequently, your parents when they have you, you're born in sin, right? So so that's your nature. That that nature never goes away. E even when you get saved, you still have that nature in you, right? Okay, so I'm still who I am. I'm, I'm still Ray. I, I, I still have these inclinations. So that's my nature. So then what happens is the Holy Spirit comes in and he tells my nature, hey, scoot over, I'm coming in. Right? So I, I, I'm coming in and I want to I wanna start taking over and I'm going to start controlling his thoughts and his life. And now he's going to be uh, get led, guided. He's going to be walking by, by what I say. And so, so my nature says, what do you mean? What do you mean, scoot over and, and let him l let you take over? There's no way. All right? And so I want you to notice the next verse. That's verse 17. Now, now look at This is very important. So it says, for the flesh. Now, what is the flesh again? What is the flesh? Okay, not, not, yeah, your, your nature, not just your sin nature, but who you are, right? When you were born from mom and dad, that, that's your personality, who you are. And, and so, does that ever go away? No, it, it never goes away. You're going to continue being that, right? With the inclinations to do wrong. All right, so, look at verse 17 then. For the flesh, who you are, sets its desire against the spirit. All right, so what does that tell you? What does that tell you? So you have desires, right? Your, 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 your nature has natural desires, and the natural desires are always usually inclined towards wrong stuff, right? Uh, I'm curious. I want to know. And that's your nature. 
I want to go against the grain. I, I, if, if they say no, I'm going to say yes. If they say yes, I'm going to say no. That, that's your flesh. That's your nature. Right? So it has a desire. And then, and then what happens? You get saved and the Holy Spirit comes in. Right? And he has a desire. The Holy Spirit. And so what happens in then? Notice that the, it says that. Notice that there's a war going on. Look at what it says. For the flesh sets its desire against the Holy Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh so that these are in opposition to one another. All right, so what's going on then? Come on, help me out. You have your own nature, right, with its inclinations and its desires, and then you got your new nature through the Holy Spirit comes into your life. All right, and so what happens then? <coughs> what happens? Somebody said something. There's a battle. There's a battle, that's right. There's a battle. Okay, somebody describe this battle. How does it go? How does this battle look? How does this battle look? All right, it looks this way. You're at school. Let's just do a school center or, or Walmart, right? And some dude walks by and he bumps you. <laughs> some, guy, some guy walks by and he bumps you. Hey, man, what's the matter with you, dummy? And then the flesh wants to say what, by the way? <laughs> Did you just call me a dummy? <laughs> Then you start to, you know, do things you shouldn't do, right? Okay. And, and, and so, so if you're a believer, the Holy Spirit says, hey, listen, be humble. Keep going. Act in love. Right? And so you can see then your, 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 your nature, who you are, automatically wants to do wrong, but the Holy Spirit says, no, be, be holy. So you come to TV or uh, your computer, and then... One little click, and you can look at stuff you shouldn't look at, right? I don't have computers. You all know what I'm talking about. It could be your phone, right? And so that's your, your nature says, oh, I'm curious. I want to click. And then the Holy Spirit says, don't do it. Don't do it. Be holy, you know? And so, so then there's, there's this battle that goes on. And that's normal if you're saved. If you're not saved, Jesus is going to do it. But if you are saved, you have the Holy Spirit. But that battle is, is furious. It's just, it's just intense. And, and you know, it, 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 and it doesn't go away. Right? Now, I, I was helping this old man. Uh, he, 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 he was turning blind, and he was getting more every day. So I would go to his house, and, and I would help him do things. And then he tells me something very interesting. He was at this time, he, I think he was 76 years old. And he tells me, hey, Ray. Now you're thinking that I don't have any more problems with the flesh because you're thinking he's an old man and he's blind. But guess what? My body, my flesh remembers what I used to look at before I was blind. And so even though I can't see, it's still there. And he goes, you thought I didn't have temptations anymore, didn't you? I said, actually, I, yeah, you're right. I thought you didn't. He goes, but I do. And I still have thoughts and I still big things and, and my nature and I had to fight it and I was like freaking out like whoa and, and so then another guy even older than him 82 years old said you know that the, it gets worse as you get older I'm like what yeah it, it, it's intense and it's not going to go away you can't wake up and say okay I'm a mature Christian now uh, full of the Holy Spirit and so I don't have that issue anymore it's not going to go away All right? when is it going to go away What's your, what's your name, dude? Uh, David. David? Yeah. Is it ever going to go away? No. No. Right? So the minute you got saved, it started. And, and you're going to have to fight the rest of your life. You're in a battle. Right? And so that's what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. right, so, so let's look at it again then with fresh eyes. Maybe it'll make more sense to you. Uh, uh, 5.16, Galatians 5.16. But I say, walk by the Spirit... So in other words, the, the everyday the decisions that you're making, every day when, you, when you're going to click that computer and look at where you shouldn't look or go where you shouldn't say, you know, or listen to things that your parents said don't listen to uh, and so forth and so on, right? Uh, every day uh, as, you're, as you're walking and the Holy Spirit is controlling you, then you won't do it. But the minute you let your guard down, the <coughs> flesh right away says, oh, good, he, 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 he. He or she uh, ignored the Holy Spirit. Click. 
It happens like that. It happens like that. You could be walking in the spirit half a day, and then it's two in the afternoon, and, and you you let your guard down. But let me see what's on the internet. And you start clicking, and next thing you know, click and, and you like, and oh, you click more and you click more, and then the Holy Spirit's over here, and you're ignoring. Him. Okay, and, and and for that moment, the flesh won, and the spirit didn't. Not that the spirit didn't have the power. You, didn't, you ignored the Holy Spirit and you let the flesh take over. All right? So somebody put it this way. Inside of us, uh, th there's, there's, a, there's a, a rotten nature and, and a good nature. Uh, the, one, the one that you feed is the one that's going to uh, dominate. The one that you feed is going to dominate. All right? So uh, <coughs> is this making a little more sense to you? See, this is something nobody explained to me. Oh, they would tell me, stop sinning. They're like, man, well, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm not, I like to sin. You know, and, and I don't know how to stop it. Right? So do you. Don't say you don't. You do. Because you're a person. You're a human being born in, in, in the flesh. Right? And so your nature naturally is going to oppose the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit tells you, obey God, be holy. Your nature says, do your own thing. Be free, independent. Don't listen to God. And so there's that battle going on. Right? Now. Uh, so you understand then the, the, the battle that happens? That makes sense to you? All right, question. Anybody want more clarification? This is your chance because then we're going to go into the next little section real quick. No? Everybody got it? Okay, well then you're smarter than I was when I was your age because I, I couldn't get it. I'm like, no, give me some more explanation. All right. Okay, now, verse 18. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, again, the Holy Spirit, walk by the Holy Spirit, be led by, you know what led means? You're following somebody, somebody's leading you. So the Holy Spirit wants to lead you, wants to guide you. Make sense? Right? Who's in your life. And the flesh keeps saying, oh, quit going that way. You don't have to be a holy roller, you know, so goody. And that's your flesh, right? And there's that battle. And the Holy Spirit saying, let me guide you. Walk by my power. I have the power so you can live the life of God. All right, now, so if you're led by the Spirit, then what he's going to do in verse 19, he's going to explain what, what, the, what the, uh, the, the deeds of your body, what your body likes to do. All right, and so he goes on to say, uh, the deeds of the flesh, what the body likes to do, does naturally, it doesn't even think about it, it wants to do it, is this, immorality. Y'all know what that is, right? Okay. Uh, sexual sins. Impurity, sensuality. So really the first three have to do with sexual sins. Then he goes into idolatry. Uh, idolatry is not just, uh, well, I don't have a statue in my, and I'm not worshiping it, but wh wh whoever uh, you, you think about constantly and admire, that, that's your idol. Right? So in our days, the girls would, would, would worship John Travolta. You know, oh, John Travolta. I don't know who it is these days. Who's it? Who's it for you girls these days? Huh? Yeah, they're not gonna admit it, right? Be huh? What's it? I said be honest. Be, be honest? Oh, be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, 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 so it's uh, idolatry. Then is not not always just worshiping a, a stone, a statue, which, which some people do, right? But it's worshiping a person or thing. Right? That's idolatry. It, it, it takes the place of God. And then you have sorcery. Now, from the word sorcery comes the word uh, pharmaceutical, right? Pharmacy. In other words, it, uh, drugs. And with drugs, it, it many, many times is involved demon worship. <clears throat> and so people will tell you, man, when I was high in that drug, I started seeing these things and having this experience, and it freaked me out. Because uh, sorcery... It is is uh, tied together, married, if you will, uh, with with drugs. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So then, so then he says, uh, enmities, which is fighting, stri uh, strife, jealousy, outburst of anger. Anybody guilty yet? Huh? Yeah. All right. Disputes, dissension, factions. You know, fighting, fighting amongst each other, envying. Are you envious of somebody? No, look at the next one. Then he goes into the, the what I call the social sin, drunkenness. 
We go to parties to get drunk. Uh, carousing and things like these. So, so the list could go on, right? So these are the things that your body, your, your nature naturally wants to do. And if you're not saved, guess what the people who are not saved do? Everything we just talked about, right? Okay, so, so imagine then. You're born into this body, this flesh, that has nothing to do with God. That's why we need to be saved by grace, right? Because there's nothing that even desires God. That, that's how rotten we are. Don't mean to disappoint you. you know? You're a cute little thing. You're going to know how cute, but you're rotten to the bone, right? <laughs> okay. And because that, that's your nature. You have to understand that. Your, your nature doesn't seek God. See? And so through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit convicts us and draws us to God. And then the Holy Spirit comes in. When the Holy Spirit comes in, He says, basically, let me take over. Walk by the Spirit. Be guided by the Spirit. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Right? Okay, so, so that's your nature. Then He goes on to say, but the fruit of the Spirit... Oh, by the way, He said, He who practices such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, that's how we know if someone's saved or not. Uh, the idea of the word practice there is to do it habitually. <coughs> right? So... I know people who would come to church and they would sing the songs, do the things, say God, Jesus, blah, 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 all that stuff, right? And then they would go and, and, and go have their drunken parties and do their thing. I, was, I saw it over and over again. Many of my friends did it, right? And so they, they, they would never show any, any fruit of the Holy Spirit, any, any uh, sign that the Holy Spirit was in their life, right? So if you practice this stuff over and over again, that's an indicator that you're not saved. Whoever practices this, this will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because you're not born again. Right? Now, how do we know you're saved? Because you're fighting the flesh. You're in a battle. That's the greatest indicator. If you're not fighting, something's wrong. <coughs> because then you're just practicing sin. Does that make sense? Right? So if you're in the battle, even if you stumble over and over again, if you're fighting it, and, and you hate that you do it, that's a great indicator. That means you're born again. That means you're saved. Because you're fighting it. Right? Now, please note, when, when you stumble and fail and, and, and commit the sin, whether it be you looked what you shouldn't have looked, you disobeyed your parents directly, you cursed, you whatever, right? God doesn't change his mind about you if you're saved. Because he sees you <laughs> fighting the flesh and the spirit. And even if you stumble, all right, you stumble. Now get back up. Get back up. And let the Holy Spirit help you learn. And, and so, but, but he doesn't say, oh, man, you, you, you're good for nothing. Oh, why did I save you? He never says that. Because you're in Christ. Right? Okay. So we're, we're in a battle. <clears throat> now, the, the fruit of the Spirit means the, 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 the result of the Holy Spirit working in your life, number one is this. Uh, verse 22. Love. Right. It doesn't mean that you love every boy that goes by. Oh, I have love. Oh, I love him. Oh, I love her. Yeah, it doesn't mean that, right? Did you thought it meant that? Did you think it meant that? Yes, you did, didn't you? All right. So, so what, what do you mean by, by love? By love. It means that you, you think of other people before yourself, right? Uh, uh, this is how we know that God loved us in that uh, he, he gave himself for us, and he became our propitiation, right? So that's how we know what love is. When, when God so loved the world that he gave, right? So love is, is giving, is, is thinking of the other person, right? Because we're naturally selfish, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, we are. All right, so so the, the, the result of the Holy Spirit being in your life is love, and it's joy, and it's peace. Do you have joy as a Christian? Uh, or do you have peace as a believer? Uh, patience. As you get older, you get less patient. Right? You need to learn to be patient. Uh, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are the things that, that show that the Holy Spirit is working in your life because He's producing these things in you. Right? Okay, so the, the, the flesh tells you uh, be immoral, uh, be jealous, be envying, be idolatrous. And the Holy Spirit says be full of love, be full of joy, be full of peace, be patient, be self-controlled, right? And, and so you can see how the two are telling you different messages. And hopefully the Holy Spirit 
is getting a hold of you, controlling you, and giving you his love and his peace and his patience and self-control. Right? So, so then, after he says that, he says, verse 24, Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. All right, what does that mean? If you're a Christian, you have crucified the flesh. What does that mean? Anybody? Nobody will hit you if you get it wrong, whatever. Just, just guess. What do, what do you think it means? What do you think, according to, since we've been looking at? He killed it. Ah, yes. Thank you. To crucify, when Jesus was crucified, he was what? He was killed, right? And so basically what he's saying is, the, the flesh, unless you die to yourself every day to your flesh, uh, you're not going to have victory. So those who belong to Christ Jesus crucify the flesh every day. You have to. You have to. Because if you don't, if you don't it's only a matter of time that, and, the, and the flesh will start to take over. And you'll become carnal, fleshly, instead of a spiritual person, right? Full of spirit, controlled by the spirit. So those who belong to Christ, they crucify the flesh. They kill it every day. I die daily. Now verse 25, if we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. And so you see the difference then? The, the Christian who, who is saved and has the Holy Spirit lives by the Holy Spirit. Every day walk. Your, your walk, your daily walk is by the Holy Spirit. And that's how you're going to have victory. Right? So uh, let's kind of try to wrap it all up. Right? So, how were we born? In sin. In sin, right? And, and there's no good in there's nothing but rottenness in us, right? And so we have to be saved by grace. Once you're saved, the Holy Spirit comes in. Holy Spirit says to the flesh, move over, I'm going to start taking over. And it says, no, no you're not. And then th there's a different desire, right? And the Holy Spirit wants to control you. And that's what the text is trying to show us. The Holy Spirit, walk by the Holy Spirit, live by the Holy Spirit, be led by the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit guide you every day, right? And, and uh, so, so try to remember that. All right, that's it. I'm done. Any questions? Any questions? There's a lot more, but it's late, you know. And uh, I don't want you to start dreaming and, and all that kind of stuff. All right, questions about this? Any, any questions at all? I mean, can we answer any questions? No? Yes. Is it is it? Well, well it, it, whether it's wrong or not doesn't matter. You're going to have them. Right. So it's wrong to act upon. Okay. Right? right. You're going to have them, but don't act upon them. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. Nice and easy. All right. Any other questions? All right. Very good. Let's pray. Father, thank you that when we're saved, you give us the Holy Spirit. And I pray that every one of us would walk by the Holy Spirit daily. Help us, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for listening.